Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. So, in this lecture we will now see the exact instantiation of the components uh, for our pre-processing phase protocol. So, we will start with the instantiation of the perfectly secure tri verifiable triple sharing protocol. So, just to recap what exactly we want from the triple sharing protocol TripSH. So, it is a special type of VSS protocol where they, there will be a designated dealer whose inputs will be now multiplication triples. So, we want the dealer to secret share L number of multiplication triplets okay, where L is some parameter and we want the privacy and the commitment property here. The privacy property demands that if the dealer is honest then the view of the adversary should be independent of the secret shared multiplication triples. That means, uh, adversary will get t shares for each of the triples for each of the multiplication triples, but the exact value of those multiplication triples should be unknown to the adversary. It could be as if any triplet from the field has been secret shared by the dealer. So, that is a first requirement. And we want the commitment property here as well which demands that even if the dealer is corrupt, it should be guaranteed that it has secret shared only multiplication triplets and not arbitrary triplets. That means, it should be guaranteed that the C component of each of the triplets which dealer has secret shared is indeed equal to the product of the corresponding A and B components. Right? So, that is a challenge here that is a challenge in this triple secret sharing protocol because just using the verified polynomial based verifiable secret sharing is not sufficient here because using the polynomial based VSS it will be guaranteed that dealer has secret shared triplets of values using T degree polynomials, but it may not secret share multiplication triplets. So, on top of verifiable secret sharing we need to add a layer of verification to verify that indeed the secret share triplets are multiplication triplets. And the challenge here is that this additional layer of verification should respect the privacy of dealer's triplets if the dealer is honest. So, intuitively what we are going to do here is that we are going to use the triple transformation protocol coupled with the polynomial verification protocol which we had discussed in the, our earlier lectures on top of the VSS to verify whether dealer has secret shared multiplication triplets or not. For simplicity for the purpose of explanation I will assume n is equal to 3 t plus 1 which is the smallest value of n satisfying the condition t less than n over 3 remember this is the optimal resilience for any generic perfectly secure multiparty computation protocol. And also for the sake of demonstration I will explain the protocol assuming that dealer wants to verifiably secret share only one multiplication triplet. Of course, if dealer wants to generate a secret share more than one multiplication triplet the protocol step can steps can be executed in parallel. So, here is the way we can combine any polynomial based VSS with the triple transformation protocol and the polynomial verification protocol to get our triple sharing protocol. To begin with dealer will secret share a bunch of random multiplication triplets. So, remember the goal of the dealer is to secret share one multiplication triplets at the end of the protocol but we also want a verification process to be incorporated to enable the parties to verify whether dealer has behaved correctly or not. Dealer actually secret shares a bunch of multiplication triplets. Out of this bunch of multiplication triplets after performing verification etcetera, we will be left with only one secret shared multiplication triplet which will be considered as the secret shared triplet on the behalf of the dealer. Okay. So, in this specific case dealer has secret share 2 t plus 1 number of 
arbitrary and random multiplication triplets. If the dealer is honest and each of the triplets is indeed a multiplication triplet, but if the dealer is corrupt that need not be the case. So, we have to now incorporate our verification mechanism once the dealer has secret shared its triplet. So, once the dealer has secret shared its triplets, it is done, it cannot now change its mind. Now, we have to go, we means the parties have to go and now they have to verify whether dealer has indeed secret shared this a secret shared multiplication triplets. So, what we first do is the following, we the, the parties execute the triple transformation protocol on the uh, triplets shared by the dealer by setting D to be 2 T. Okay. So, recall that in the triple transformation protocol there is a set of secret shared triplets which may or may not be multiplication triplets and they are transformed into another bunch of secret shared triplets which are correlated in the sense there will be an A polynomial, there will be a B polynomial, there will be a C polynomial where the C polynomial will be the product of the A and B polynomials if all the input triplets are multiplication triplets. So, that is what we are going to do here. So, we apply that triple transformation protocol here, V means the parties execute the triple transformation protocol here on the set of secret share triplets of the dealer. As a result of that, they will now have 2t plus 1 number of secret shared triplets and they are correlated. They are correlated in the sense that there will be a t degree A polynomial, there will be a t degree B polynomial and there will be a 2t degree C polynomial, okay. such that the A components of all the transformed triplets lie on the A polynomial, the B components of all the transformed triplets lie on the B polynomial and the C component of C components of all the uh, transform triples, triplets lie on the C polynomial. Okay. Now, let us define another point on this defined A, B and C polynomials namely the A polynomial at beta we define to be A, the B polynomial defined at beta let us call it B and the C polynomial defined at beta a uh, C polynomial evaluated at beta let us call it C. Notice that D will the dealer will know the value of this triplet A B C. Why it will know the value of this triplet A B C? Because it will know the polynomials A B and C, because this A B and C polynomials they are computed deterministically as a function of all the triplets shared by the dealer during this triple transformation protocol. So, since all the triplets shared by the dealer are known to the dealer and it knows the steps of the triple transformation, we can say that dealer is aware of this triplet A B C. Now, once the triplets are transformed into the correlated triplets, we have this A, B and C polynomials and now the goal is to check whether the C polynomial is the product of A and B polynomials. And for that the parties execute an instance of polynomial verification protocol polyware. The output will be either success or failure for the honest parties. If the output of the polynomial verification protocol is success, then the parties output a secret sharing of this triplet A B C. And they can do that because a secret sharing of A, B, C can be computed as a local function as a linear function of the secret shared triplets which are obtained at the end of triple transformation because the A, A component of this triplet A, B, C is nothing but a point on the A polynomial. So, the value A is nothing but a Lagrange interpolation function of the A component of all the transform triplets which is a linear function. So, since A component of all the transform triplets are secret shared by applying the same Lagrange interpolation function on the secret sharing of the A component of all the transform triplets, the parties will get a secret sharing of the 
A component of the triplet ABC. Similarly, they can obtain a secret sharing of the B component of this triplet ABC and the secret sharing of the C component of this triplet ABC. Whereas, if the output of the poly, very, polynomial verification is failure and looking ahead if the output of the poly, polynomial verification is failure then the dealer is corrupt, we are going to claim that later, then the parties safely take a default sharing of the triplet 0 0 0 on the behalf of the dealer. That means, the parties uh, set the output assuming that dealer wanted to secret share the triplet 0 0 0. So, that is the triple sharing protocol. Now, let us prove each of the properties which we de desire from this triple sharing protocol. So, let us first prove a bunch of properties if the dealer is honest. So, remember this is a dealer specific protocol and we have a bunch of requirements for an honest dealer and we have another bunch of requirements for a corrupt dealer. So, let us prove the requirements for an honest dealer. So, if the dealer is honest then the claim is that the parties do not output the default sharing of 0, but rather they output the secret shared ABC triplet, where the triplet ABC will be a multiplication triplet such that the adversary's view will be independent of this triplet ABC. That means, adversary will have at most T shares for this triplet ABC, which are going to be randomly distributed over the field. And this comes from the fact that since all the triplets shared by an honest dealer will be multiplication triplet, then from the property of triple transformation, it follows that all the correlated triplets will also be multiplication triplets. That means, the C polynomial will be the product of A and B polynomials, right. And during the triple transformation, the adversary will not learn anything about the A, B and C polynomials, because none of the triplets shared by the dealer will be known. That comes from the privacy property of the verifiable secret sharing, right. So, the privacy property of the verifiable secret sharing guarantees that since the dealer is honest, the adversary will not know any of the secret shared triplets, the input triplets. And as a result of that, since none of the triplets shared by the dealer is known to the adversary, the privacy property of triple transformation guarantees that none of the transformed triplets is also known to the adversary. That means, they are randomly distributed, adversary will just have T shares for each of the transformed triplets. But during the polynomial verification process, at most T of this transformed triplets will be learnt by the adversary during the designated verification by T corrupt verifiers and that is all. That means, throughout the protocol adversary will learn at most T points on this A, B and C polynomials, but the degree of the A polynomial, degree of the B polynomial is T. That means, there is one degree of freedom from the viewpoint of the adversary. Okay. That means, definitely there is at least uh, one triplet among this correlated triplets which is not known to the adversary okay, at the end of the polynomial verification process. And as a result of that, the value of the A, B and C polynomials at beta is also randomly distributed for the adversary. Namely, for every candidate uh, unknown triplet among these correlated triplets, uh, which is unknown to the adversary at the end of polynomial verification, there is a corresponding ABC triplet which will be consistent with the view of the adversary, whatever shares adversary has received. And why this triplet ABC will be a multiplication triplet? Because that triplet uh, constitute distinct points on the A, B and C polynomials and we know that for an honest dealer, the C polynomial is the product of A and B polynomials. Okay. So, we have proved that if the dealer is honest, then at the end of the protocol, 
there is one secret share triplet known to the dealer which is a multiplication triplet which is random for the adversary and which is secret share triplet. So, you can see that at the end of the protocol it is only one output which is the final output namely the secret share triplet ABC even though dealer started the protocol with a bunch of 2T plus 1 triplets. So, dealer has secret share 2T plus 1 triplets all of them are transformed some of them are verified some means all of them are verified in the verification process the privacy of some of the triplets is lost that is why at the end of the th uh, protocol it is only one triplet which is considered to be secret shared on the behalf of the dealer. That means, if dealer wants to secret shared L number of multiplication triplets then it has to do this process L number of times. That means, it will secret share actually L times 2T plus 1 number of multiplication triplets then there will be L batches of triple transformation process protocol and L batches of polynomial verification process and so on. Now, let us claim the properties achieved by this triple sharing protocol for a corrupt dealer. We want to claim here that even if the dealer is corrupt at the end of the protocol there will be a secret shared multiplication triplet which will be taken as the output on the behalf of the dealer. And now there are two possible cases depending upon whether the polynomial verification uh, protocol fails or it provides the output success which further depends upon whether the triplets shared by the dealer using the verifiable secret sharing are multiplication triples or not. So, if the triplets shared by the dealer are multiplication triplets that means, even though dealer is corrupt, but it is uh, careful in the sense that during the VSS instances while secret sharing the triplets it has secret shared multiplication triplets. They need not be random because it is a corrupted dealer. So, for instance, it may always secret share 1, 1, 1, all the triplets it might secret share as 1, 1, 1, that is fine. Our goal will be to ensure that at the end of the protocol, the value ABC, which is considered as the output for a corrupted dealer, turns out to be a multiplication triplet. So, if all the triples shared by the dealer are multiplication triples, then the triple transformation protocol guarantees that the C polynomial is the product of the A and B polynomials. And as a result of that, the polynomial verification protocol will output success because there will be no genuine complaints against the dealer. And if the output of the polynomial verification is success, then no one will take this route, no one will output a default secret sharing of 0. Uh, the triplet 0, 0, 0 on the behalf of the dealer, everyone will take the secret sharing of the values A, B, C and A, B, C will constitute a multiplication triplet because A is nothing but the A polynomial evaluated at beta, B is nothing but the B polynomial evaluated at beta and the value C is nothing but the C polynomial evaluated at beta and we have already argued that we are in the case where the C polynomial is the product of A and B polynomials. The other case could be that a corrupt dealer has not secret shared multiplication triples. Okay. That means, during the VSS instances it is supposed to secret shared multiplication triples, but suppose it has not secret shared multiplication triples. Say for instance, the first triplet shared by the dealer is not multiplication triple. That means, C of 1 is not equal to A of 1 into B of 1. If that is the case, then we know that at the end of the triple transformation protocol, the C polynomial will not be equal to the product of A and B polynomial because triple transformation protocol will then guarantee that the first triplet here, the first transformed triplet is not a multiplication triplet, but the A component, B component and C component of all the transform triplets will be guaranteed to be lying on A, B and C polynomials respectively. And since the first transform triplet is not a multiplication triplet that means, the C polynomial at 1 alpha 1 it will not equal to the B polynomial at alpha 1 times the A polynomial at alpha 1. Now, since the A, B and C polynomials 
further go through the polynomial verification process and in this case the C polynomial is not equal to the product of A and B polynomials, the output of the polynomial verification pro protocol will be failure, okay. it would not be this route. As a result, the parties will go and follow the route under failure condition and under the failure condition the parties are supposed to output a default secret sharing of the triplet 000, namely the parties everyone will output the shares 000 on the behalf of the dealer and it is easy to see that 000 indeed constitute, constitutes a multiplication triplets. Well, it is not random because everyone will know that dealer has secret shared 000 and everyone will know the value of the triplet, but that is fine because we are not claiming anything regarding the random or non-random nature of the triplet shared on the behalf of a corrupt dealer. Okay. So, that shows that all the claimed properties of the triple sharing protocol uh, are achieved in a perfectly secure way even in the presence of a computationally unbounded adversary and in an error free fashion. So, with that I end this lecture, again the reference for this lecture is this IEEE transaction paper. Thank you.